everyone, it's Seth Rudetsky back here on Seth Speaks. They go together like bacon and eggs. They're married in real life and starring in Daddy Long Legs. I still got it. Matter. Uh, it's true. It's Megan McGinnis and Adam uh, Halpin, I want to say, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Not Halpern. Uh, so, first of all, Megan, you were such a feminist, you didn't take Adam's last name. What's up with that? Um, I thought about it. I really did. I was talking to a friend of mine, though, and she said, well, why wouldn't he take yours? Thank you. Well, why didn't you, Adam? <laughs> silence. <laughs> Radio silence. I got nothing. He's got nothing except for his old school sexism. So, <laughs> Megan and Adam, uh, they're starring in Daddy Long Legs. First discuss the show, then we'll discuss you too. Mm-hmm. Daddy Long Legs, I know that it was directed by, I want to say Trevor Nunn. Is it Trevor uh, Nunn? John Caird, the other Lehman's director. So, there, you know, Lehman's directed by two people. So, it wasn't him, it was... Okay, so it's John <laughs> Caird. Yeah, now, who Caird. did Jane Eyre? John Caird. Okay, so yep. okay, I'm gonna get straight now. So Daddy Long Legs, I feel like it began in England, right? It didn't, although we did play the show in London. Uh, it began in 2009 in California, of all places. And what is the actual show? What is what is it about? Describe it. Uh, Daddy Long Legs is about uh, an orphan in 1908. It's British, right? No, it's American. Because they keep touting it like it's down to Abbey. <laughs> No, it's actually a very American story. Uh, it was written by Gene Webster, who was the, yes, that's better, uh, the grand, great grand niece of Mark Twain, oh, I believe. Blah, blah. Yeah, uh, related to Mark Twain. Uh, she wrote the novel in the early 1900s. It's about an orphan, Drusha Abbott, who was sent to college by an anonymous donor. And she gets a letter from him. She's at the orphanage. She gets a letter from him. It says, I'm sending you to college. There are only a couple of rules. You must write me a letter every month. Uh, but just know, I will never read the letter, and I will never write you back. What an annoying person. I know. <laughs> uh, so she decides that she's going to win him over, and she's going to write him every month, and she's going to try and convince him to write back. Uh, meanwhile, you find out that the anonymous donor is this fellow, Jervis Pendleton, played by my dear husband, is Adam Do you have a normal name, by the way, in the show? No. Jerusha okay. Abbott and Jervis Pendleton. I'm out. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> one June site. Okay, yes. Um... <laughs> I'm half Jewish. Does that count? No, dear. Okay. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, it's my mom's last name. My dad's last name is Pack, which is a Russian boat name. But I'm sure it was really like Pashkovitz. Probably. Yes. Yeah, we never found out. Uh, so she, uh, Jervis Pendleton gets her letters, and he's actually very curious about who she is. So he decides he's going to go meet her, but not tell her who he actually is. But is he actually the benefactor? He is. But why, why is he also so young? He's rich. He, from a rich family. Yeah, he's from a very rich family. Now, why can't you just look up on the internet who he is? <laughs> 1908, baby. Oh, this is pretty. I wouldn't know. When I was born, the internet was in full swing. Uh, okay, so wait, so... So, this sounds like an enormous show, but as far as I know, it's literally just starring two people. Yeah, it's just the two of us, and it's all letters. It's all her letters to him, and then you see him reading her letters and trying to respond, never actually sending her the letters. Uh, our... Can you find out why he's so annoying, by the way, why he refuses to ever... Yes. Actually, that's what's so beautiful about the story, is you think that it's the tale of a young woman learning who she is, growing up, going to college, being educated, but you also find out that it's about this man who's lost his family and uh, sort of finds himself and why he distances himself from people and how he can open up. Emotional intimacy issues. Yeah, very much so. (laughs) Okay, so... So, so the play, the, the musical is like played all over the place, right? Yeah, I've done. So I've been a part of it since two thousand nine. Uh, we've done thirteen regional productions, uh, so one in Canada, mm-hmm. and one in London. And then we opened off Broadway in September, originally with Paul Nolan. I started opposite him, but he left us for Bright Star, and so then uh, my husband came in and, and joined me. That is so fantastic. And um, you, I remember you from uh, Little Women. Yeah. So can I play your beautiful, beautiful song you sang with Sutton Foster? Yeah. Which is a really pretty song, but basically the subtext says, "Oops, I'm about to die." Yeah. Because you played that. Joe, right? I played Beth. Sutton played Joe. All right. Two yeah. downers. So anyway, it's a really, really pretty song, but basically it's like five minutes before the, the death toll. So enjoy. We'll put that in post. What's it called? Some things are meant. Some to things be. are meant to be. All right. All right, well, that was a downer. All right, so <laughs> Megan Adams, so Wait, you're both but starring. what about yeah. Flight? That's our new one that's not such a downer. That's from, is that from the live album? That's from Sun's No, that's album. her first album, yeah. A song okay, by we'll play Kevin that at the end. end. Later, okay, great, yeah. <laughs> uh, but let me ask you, so you're married to Adam. I know Adam from when I first interviewed him from uh, Glory Days. 
how did you guys uh, meet? Because apparently you're not supposed to have quote unquote showmances in this business. We actually did not have a showmance. Um, the, the, our, our first meeting, I saw her. I was a senior in college, and I went to Rutgers, so pretty close by. And uh, my buddy and I came up to see uh, a benefit concert done at the Lortel of a musical version of Twelfth Night called Illyria. And Megan was playing viola, and it was the first time I saw her, and I was absolutely mesmerized by her. And uh, we spoke for about 10 minutes at the after party, and she does not remember. Uh -uh, sorry. So, uh, <laughs> cut to four years later, I'm living here. Um, she had seen me in shows. We knew who each other was at this point. And then we sort of re-met at this uh, audition. It was a callback. Tinder? Fiddler on the Roof! Oh. <laughs> See, pre-Tinder. We never had to go through Tinder. We were already dating before Tinder. Yeah, it was 2008. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we um, started talking at this audition. It was like a six-hour affair, and we really started to talk and get to know each other. And then our first official date oh, wait, was... Oh, did you both not get the show? No. We did not. <laughs> As you bonded in rejection. Yeah, yes. that's right. That's right, in misery. Um, and our first date, actually, was... Um, we volunteered for Obama together in 2008. Uh, and we went to a Joe Biden rally in, outside of Philadelphia. Yeah. Oh, so so you actually asked her out for the rally? You were like, hey, let's go on a date. Sort of, Basically. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. And I didn't, I wasn't convinced that he wasn't a stalker or crazy, so I invited a friend of mine. So Why would you think he's a stalker if you literally don't even remember meeting him? <laughs> what is stalking? Seriously. I don't know. I don't know. It was, I was... I was nervous about getting in a car with someone I didn't know very well and driving all the way to Pennsylvania. So who did you invite as your... Don't say Sutton, it's so rude. No, Nikki Renee Daniels. Oh, brava. Yeah, so... But wait, the, I think another Tony Award winner? Uh, no. No, Nikki... But Nikki she will win a Tony. <laughs> she's from Morgan Best, right? She's from what? Morgan Best. Yes, she is. Yeah, amazing voice. Yep. And she's currently a Book of Mormon, yeah. So got it. So yeah. she was your buffer, so she was going to beat him up? She weighed around 80 pounds. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> um, cards better. Though, my, my smoothness was that um, Megan drove, I was in the passenger seat, and Nikki sat in the back, and then the whole time on the way down, I was just making Nikki laugh, and, you know, I got into <laughs> the very friend. charming. Uh, and and yeah. Megan was just, like, driving, going, like... So funny. Some <laughs> directions of your yeah. bus did. Yeah. And then how did you finally bomb when Obama got reelected? You celebrated with your own Actually he called me that night and that was when he asked me out for just the two of us to dinner. The night that Obama was. Were you still won. nervous? No. I was over that. So this is now two thousand twelve? Two thousand eight. The first time. Oh wow. Yeah. And we married in twenty thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the uh, what's the engagement story or the you know? Go say? ahead, Adam. The engagement story is that um, I wanted to do something where um, I gathered all the people that we love, my parents, her parents, and we rented out this um, place called New York Vintners, which is a sort of a wine store slash private event space uh, downtown on Warren Street. And I flew in her parents from California. And Just for the engagement? Yeah, because it was what like a... she say no? <laughs> we had already talked oh, about the ring. Oh, I picked up the ring before that. Are you one like, of those girls? It's I so am, I'm sorry. I, wa I wanted to... I wanted to... Um, it to be a surprise because she already knew it was coming, so I was trying to throw curveballs left and right. That's so... Uh, her parents flew in. People who were supposed to... Like Sutton flew in from L.A. She was supposed to be there. She came in. And there was 20 of us. And... Um, Telly Leung and I had planned to showbiz. sort of, <laughs> right. yeah, it was show, so, so much showbiz, um, to sort of throw her off. So I had a matinee that day, and we went, I was doing dogfight at the time, actually, and we went downtown uh, with me and Telly and his partner, Jimmy, and with Megan, and we were like, oh, we're going to go to, like, a wine tasting and hang out. And um, we went, walked into this place, and they were in the back, and as soon as we pulled up in the curtain to this back room, everyone was sort of standing, huddling in the corner, <laughs> And Megan sort of like was like what what? And I turned around and I uh, said, "This is for you." And I got down and I proposed. And um, and then and then after I proposed and said yes, and she sort of started seeing people one by one, and sort of the waters parted, and there were her parents, and she just lost it because her parents never get, really get to come to New York very often from L.A. And oh my it was really God, special. Amazing. You actually followed through on things. I would have thought of that idea, and it would have been day. I would have been like, ah, I'll just Skype. <laughs> I'm super impressed. You actually followed You're through. You're a busy man. <laughs> no, but I must have ADD. Um, okay, so hold on. So then you then you, enga you got engaged, and then where did you get married? We got married uh, in Long Island City, right across the river, at nice a place, uh, rooftop yeah. um, hotel or restaurant place called Ravel. And uh, overlooking the skyline, it was... On a Monday, of course. Pretty stunning, yeah. And is this the first music we've done together? 
Uh, no, actually, we, we've we done uh, two other shows together, but never a show that's just us and yeah. opposite each other. Yeah, barely, sort of. So are you guys getting divorced, or is that just... <laughs> Not no, yet. but yeah. we, did, <laughs> we did accept, I did accept doing this on the sort of trial run sort of situation, testing the waters, because two-person show, you know, it was a lot. That's like, a lot of pressure. Yeah, it so, is. But it's you don't have anyone else right? backstage to kind of dish about how annoying she is. Nope. Yeah, I just basically do that to her face. Yeah. You're really annoying yeah. today. We and do are you guys sharing a dressing room? Basically. Basically. We're not, but there's a very thin wall. And yeah. It's, you know, it's off Broadway, so. Okay, so hold on. So you started, you've been starting this for how long together? How many months? I joined, uh, end of November. November. End of November. And it's called Daddy Long Legs because that's the nickname she comes up with for this guy. Yeah, he calls himself John Smith, and she says that's a terrible name. There's no, there's no personality to that. And she assumes that he's an older fellow because only old people are rich. Uh-huh. And the only thing she knows of him is that she sees his shadow as he leaves the orphanage. And Sorry, the fine. shadow, yes, the shadow looks like a daddy long legs. So she calls Ooh. him daddy long legs. And then she's sorting to, to uh, daddy because she's looking for a father figure and has no idea that he's so young. I'm hoping that this works out at the end. Well, maybe you should come and see. Spoiler alert! <laughs> 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 okay, so you guys, and I go, you guys, it also got filmed too, right? Was yeah, it? we did a live stream on uh, December so 10th cool. of last year. 150,000 people watched. So people crazy. in Syria watched it, Seth. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, it's crazy, sort of, when we were told sort of the, the optics of how it went through, how it went, everything went, and uh, just impressed by sort of the outreach of the show. It's and so nice that it, you can bring musical theater. Everything is so different now with, with the internet that you can actually bring musical theater around the world. Yeah. Were you terrified, though, when it would let you make a mistake and was going to see it? Yes. Were you really? I was. I mean, it, the lead-up was the hardest. The week before, mm-hmm. the day of. And then once we started the actual show, I felt fine. Because, because we, we had two cameras, uh, one house left, one house right, and we just got to do our show. We did a run-through that afternoon, and this guy was calling... The calling director. the video, the director was calling it on. Sp- he was incredible. He like directs reality television, oh, so and he just oh, called it on spot. He was amazing, and he's like, "Don't alter anything. Don't plan anything for the cameras. Like we got you." And it was, it felt really safe that way. Yeah, and it was a great house. We had a bunch of friends in the audience. It felt like opening night. Yeah, it was really cool. That's so fun. Now, speaking of being nervous, what, what's been your biggest mistake that's happened on stage to you, Megan? To me, in this in show, any show, in any show. Um, my favorite mistake, actually, I, I didn't. It didn't actually happen to me. Um, I didn't make the mistake, but we were out of town. Um, it was probably our third year doing Daddy Long Legs, and they had taken all the scores from the orchestra and Xeroxed them for our next production. Yeah. And our MD at the time... Musical director. Uh, yes, our Not musical doctor. director. <laughs> 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 um, had, had gone through her score to make sure that it was in order, but somehow missed one of the songs. Oh, so we get God, to... So um <laughs> We get to The Color of Your Eyes, which is the song we wanted to sing for you today, actually. Oh, okay, um, And there's some underscore that happens about a minute before the song starts. And I start the line where the underscore uh-huh. usually happens, and there's no music. And I'm st- we had a pit um, at this theater, and I'm just staring at her, and she's just, just flipping, flipping, madly flipping, flipping yes. through. And then she starts cursing. Um, Not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, she picks up the, the phone that goes to the stage manager and says, we have to hold, we have to hold. And at this point, I'm at the beginning of the song, and I'm like, do I just sing it a cappella? But oh then God. she's yelling, we have to hold. So I just... Um, I was playing opposite um, uh, Rob Hancock at the time, and Rob and I just looked at each other, and we both just turned up stage. I don't know why. Like, our backs to the audience would sort of cover what was going on. And then um, Julie, our MD, yells, We're holding! We're holding! And so we just walked off stage. Wait, no one has the audience? And then our, um, the associate director uh, of the theater comes on stage, he happened to be in the wings, and says, uh, we're going to hold for a minute. Um, and so then Rob and I go off stage, and we're just nervously laughing. We just have no idea what's happening. You know what happened, you just heard, we have to hold, we have to hold. Uh, yeah. Um, so then we go back on, and Julie seems very uh, settled, and we just started from the top of the, the song and went on. <laughs> so nervous. This is my life theater. That kind of thing makes me so scared, misplacing uh, music, because it's happened to me. Even, like, I was playing Grease for, like, four years, and, like, I completely had the score memorized. But, like, in the middle of, like, Summer Nights, the score fell, and I was like, I don't know. I literally, I know if I hop a Nazi in front of me, I'm like, I don't remember it. Yep. It's so scary. It's so scary. Yeah, she probably could have played it from memory. Exactly. But you you, you get panicked. That's why it's better to almost be an actor when, like, you have to have it memorized. When you're a musician, yeah. you're used to looking at, don't get me started. 